Hey, what's up everyone? It's your buddy Matt here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to make a little video about all the knickknacks and stuff that I bought, pretty much all snowmobile related, throughout the summer season. I'm here on site today at the Ormstown Fairgrounds for our annual summer show. Uh, there's a swap meet, there's an awesome exposition, and I covered that in a video that I just posted. We'll walk around this show, we'll check and see the parts and the stuff that uh, I want to buy. There's some pretty rare stuff, some pretty cool stuff, so if that sounds Sounds good? Stick around. So even though not all the vendors are here yet, uh, I think most of the best deals are had early in the morning. Or maybe it's at the end of the day. I'm not sure, but uh, I like to do a first pass, try to pick up all the goodies, all the goodies that I desire before everyone gets here. All right, so this is one of my favorite sellers. He's always got a bunch of cool old race stuff. I mean, this stuff is getting rarer and rarer, at least in these shows. You know, you got some old triple cranks, some RV stuff. CDI tester brand new in the box you know a nice little little box of surprises in here a white crank puller and I don't even know what the heck this thing is I'm sure it's I'm sure it's cool and rare but uh, no I always like coming to this guy's table I got a box full of old Bosch spark plugs I'll have to sift through that and see if there's anything for my for my 370 but yeah it's always fun seeing uh, seeing some cool rare stuff all right feast your eyes folks at least I'm feasting my eyes, uh, my favorite sled. 1975 245 RV, gotta love it. I was speaking with the uh, owner, and uh, this gentleman over here, Anil Tetro, I ended up buying a uh, my 73 Blizzard off him. And I, he rebuilt that engine in 2008, so small world, pretty cool. Yeah, so 6,800, you can be the proud owner of a uh, 1975 245. Not rich enough yet for that, folks. Boxes of cleats, some brand new skis, and look at this, NOS pistons, as far as the eye can see, or at least two feet ahead of you. And that's Quebec stuff, got rings, I'll check this out before if there's anything good for me. But there wasn't. So what is it? 73 EXT 650. EXT 650, for all you Articat guys out there. I think that's something good. And how much would that set me back? Hard to say, uh, eh? Thousand dollars. Thousand bucks? Yeah. Thousand bucks. It's a steal. Yeah, so those 650 parts, I was like, I have no idea in Arctic Cat vocabulary what that means. And he's all like, so he spoke in my language. He's like, imagine it's for a 72 Blizzard or something. I'm like, oh, okay, so it's full race parts. I guess I understand the rarity. They are NOS after all, so. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Fun fact. You guys might not know this, but uh, this show is where I get most of my wardrobe for the channel. So there's two big, big part vendors here. There's a lot of brand new stuff uh, for the old sleds. This table back here, and these guys right over here. Look at that, a box full of Bosch capacitors and points. I bought some of these at the previous show from this guy and uh, pretty nice to know that you can still get Bosch stuff. Not in the not in the yellow boxes, but uh, I think it's made in Turkey. But Bosch is Bosch, probably better than uh, the Chinese stuff. I actually wanna give a shout out to one of my subscribers that in a previous video when I said, does anyone know where I can get Bosch capacitors? He actually gave me uh, GB Distribution's contact info. So you, you know who you are. Thanks a lot, that was a great tip. Also bought a bunch of tillets and stuff. Look at this, he's got all of it over here. You kind of ask him what you want. It's not all that expensive. He's also gone as far as making his own reproduction parts. Look at this GB Distribution. Uh, all kinds of rubbers, you got the, the, the cog wheels. Uh, he even has tracks, look at this. GB distribution, <laughs> I'm not gonna call it NOS, this is brand new uh, tracks that fit on old sleds. You can now find brand new stuff. This is really exciting. Question for you. Ça, tu fais tout ton propre stock, là? Oui. Ça, maintenant, on verse ça sur le Kimtex. Oui. 
par modo de ça. Mettons, les Kimpex sont beaucoup plus mou que ça, là, ça c'est beaucoup plus dur. Ok, ok. Là, nos sprockets de même sont en UHMW ou ouais. d'être en plastique. Puis aussi, ça, tu peux pas tordre ça. C'est comme les, les motoneiges récentes. Ok. Puis on fait aussi les roues de buggy euh, qui sont une pièce chaque, qui sont plus récentes, plus dures. Puis le top, il est plus plat au lieu d'être pointu comme okay. les Kimpex. Ok, Mais ok. C'est sûr okay. qu'en mettant du poids, ils vont être moins portés à craquer okay. aussi. Eh, hey, merci, sûr, hein. Pas de trop fait plaisir. All right, so for those of you who didn't want to read all that, uh, basically, uh, I asked him what the difference was between the Kimpex and his own personal brand. And he said, you know, the, the rubber is more rigid on the black ones, and this is UHMW versus just regular plastic. And I know exactly what he means. Those were better quality components. So 100 bucks, I got a kit. We're going to put that on the Olympic. Even though I did buy some Kimpex stuff, uh, we're going to probably put that on the Olympic. And I asked him if he had the wider ones because I want to rebuild my TNT uh, 6 69 the 69 uh, and he says next year he's gonna have the wider the wider sprockets and rear sprockets and everything even probably the wider uh, bogey tires so I said I'll come back next year I don't think I'm gonna get around to that sled this year anyways so uh, that'll be for next year but I'm happy with those purchases and we'll see if they are better than Kimpex let's put them side to side and see been going through all these uh, carb boxes uh, looking for the elusive HD4A Tillotson that goes on the 67 opposed 370 it's got the the side mount fuel pump and you know good luck finding that but you never know uh, I guess today's not my day though I don't know what that goes on oh you see do guys out there a little sea -Doo engine or a hybrid of one at least <laughs> i think i saw a starter crank over here cool cool so this is the other big 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 new old parts vendor uh, all kinds of stuff this guy's got a pretty good inventory and he still has some, I guess, original Windorosa kits. And then I know that now it's Vertex. From what I understand, the Windorosas, although not original parts, uh, were okay. And then the new Vertex ones apparently are not as good. What do you guys think? I'm not sure. I ended up buying some Vertex stuff recently, but uh, I used to use Windorosa, never had any problems with that, and I haven't tested the Vertex stuff. But if you guys have an opinion on that, leave it down in the comments below. I'd like to know what you think. Piston, uh, piston, mettons, pour un 370 uh, oppose. Non, c'est le même piston que... Les 165. Piston, 165, là. Ouais, je pense qu'il m'en reste un, puis il est 100 au rang. Ah ouais? Triste, puis des gaskets de taille, des choses comme ça, pour n'importe quelle pièce pour ce moteur. Des gaskets, j'en ai. Pour ce moteur-là? Ouais. Des gaskets, euh, c'est 6,40. Il va être écrit 370 quelque part. 277. C'est le gasket au complet. Avez-vous une carte de besoin? Oui. Je vais t'en prendre deux comme ça. Puis euh, tu avais dit que tu avais des bons primers. Là. Fait qu'eux autres, tu sais, euh, ça chira pas après une saison, là. Non, c'est des vrais Made in the West, pas des Shintok de merde. Là. OK, OK. Merci beaucoup. Ciao, man. Yes, à la prochaine. I'm gonna throw that in there with the rest of the haul. Doing good, doing good. This would fit on the 68 Olympic, but I think it's a 6970 seat. But the price is pretty good, considering that if I had to make my own, it would probably cost what this guy's asking for this one already done. I have to think about this one. All right, so after a little bit of thinking, I figured I'd go with the actual 68 seat, and he can make them custom, so I gave him my name, my number, and about a month, I should receive my 1968 seat, so we can get that project, my 68 370 opposed uh, back on the snow this winter. So stay tuned for that one coming up, I guess, in a few months. Yeah, used parts galore as always, just milk crates full and full and full of stuff. You gotta kind of sift through it to find treasures 
the elusive treasures that everyone's looking for. So things are starting to peter down and uh, I asked my uh, my buddy Real here how things went. He said pretty well, but he would have enjoyed selling a couple helmets. So uh, yours truly made a little bargain. Didn't think I was gonna buy anything else, but uh, ended up buying two helmets right before leaving. So uh, gonna add these to my stable. All right, and that completes our find for today. All right, so I picked up pretty much everything I needed. Let's uh, let's head on back to my shop and I'll show you all the other junk that I picked up <laughs> on top of what I'm going to bring back today. <laughs> I want to play a little something for you that I taped uh, moments after I kind of just closed up that last uh, that last scene I had. All right, so what might possibly be the the best thing that happened today, I just might have gotten a lead on a Tillotson HD4A. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's the carburetor that we got on a 1967 370 opposed twin. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna go check that out tomorrow. Not too sure if it's gonna pan out, but uh, I sure as heck hope so. That's right. Folks, the elusive HD4A. Uh, I'm on my way there now. I really, really hope that this pans out. All right, so uh, I am not disappointed. Got a little something in a NOS bag with a tag on it that I'd like to show you, and uh, that's not all. I got uh, I got quite a few little goodies. So uh, now let's actually go back to the garage and check out all my scores. Right off the bat, uh, you know, I bought a couple silly toques uh, for my channel at the Ormstown show. But more importantly, I bought this really awesome, it looks almost like a moto ski color jacket, or maybe it's Bombardier, I don't know. Uh, the tag has been removed, maybe that's why I got it so cheap. What I liked about it was this is for uh, the Quebec Snowmobile Federation. This would have been maybe a patroller's jacket. Uh, fits me tight or perfect, I guess, uh, depending on whether or not I had lunch. But just look at it. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Along the same lines, uh, I bought this in Yamashish uh, from the same seller. I think I bought all these stuff uh, off one of our club members. Then you got these two uh, helmets over here. Nothing really special about them. This is just kind of, you know, the typical old school bucket helmet. <laughs> Uh, and then this is a Bombardier a Skidoo, probably a little more recent than what I'm used to, but uh, you know, I don't have any blue helmets and uh, I don't know, maybe one day if I get a 1980s machine, well, I'll be glad to have the, uh, the blue helmet to go along with it. As I just mentioned earlier on, I bought some Bosch uh, condensers. That's gonna be good. Bought some spark plugs I ran out last season and some tilts and carb parts. There was also a guy selling these reproduction uh, crank uh, crank handles and uh, you know, just for my old school rides, paid $15 for it with the boot. So that's kind of good to have. Brand spanking new. This is the primer, the made in USA primer that uh, hopefully won't fail after one season. Picked up the uh, 370 Rotax uh, kits. What I like about them mainly is that they have the original NOS head gaskets. And then we have the reproduction uh, drive drive sprockets and driven sprockets. Stay tuned, uh, maybe in one of my upcoming videos, I'm gonna actually compare the Kimpex versus the uh, reproduction. All right, now onto the good stuff. Uh, while I was in Yamashish, right when I got through the door, I saw this sitting on a table and I asked the guy how much he wanted I think he said I don't know 100 bucks or 125 bucks I offered him 75 to which he replied do you know what this is and I said absolutely it's an air box and a carburetor for a 370 and uh, he ended up selling it to me for $75 so this is the HD 6a so off I guess a 68 but uh, a spare carb and you know the very rare air box well rare for me because I don't have enough of them for all my motors and speaking of motors uh, I want to talk about this guy but first I want to show you another one uh, I ended up buying back in uh, May this complete engine off a guy online Funny story about that motor, uh, saw it online, went to go see the guy, and when I got there, actually a couple kilometers before I got there, I said, this place seems very, very familiar. It was actually the same person that had sold me my 1968 Olympic with the 370 in it, the one that I'm actually restoring in that little video series. And when I got there, I said, I ended up buying an Olympic off you several years earlier, and he said, oh really? Didn't really care, but ultimately had another engine. 
The only caveat is that this engine is seized. So I ended up having to buy another one. So not sure if you guys noticed uh, in one of the previous scenes when I was driving back and I said that I had something else. Uh, this was the something else and you could actually see it in the trunk of the car. When I ended up buying that carburetor uh, off the gentleman, uh, he ended up telling me that he had a complete engine that he was saving for himself for a project one day because it was a very good one. Um, and I was able to talk him out of that one as well. It's got the 1968 carb on it. Uh, I'm hoping that the heads on them are not stripped. Uh, it does have this, I'm not sure if this is an original or a more modern clutch, not the same as most of the other clutches I have, but overall I checked in uh, the carburetor to see what the cylinder looks like and it looks not too bad. So I have this complete, we'll call it a potentially functional engine. And that brings my count up to probably about four. However, as someone very wise once said, there's a fine line between collection and obsession. Did you guys actually think that I was gonna stop at four? Yeah, so ended up buying another five of them as a package deal from another one of the club members that knew that I was getting into them. Uh, three of which are very, very complete, if not fully complete. Uh, one of them is missing a little bit and one of them missing a little bit more. Hopefully I should be good to get all three of my sleds that require these engines up and running. But Matt, what if you need an NOS piston? Yeah, I got my hands on one of those too. Uh, the same gentleman that had the ultra rare HD 4A carburetor actually had uh, in stock a standard bore uh, Elko uh, 370 or 163 piston. So I ended up buying that off him as well. Needless to say how rare that is. Now for the piece de resistance, uh, the HD4A carburetor. Uh, I actually want to set up one of these to go into my 67 Super Alpine to have the correct 370. And in order to do that, I needed one of these bad boys. Uh, the carburetor that was installed in 1967 on both the Olympics and the Alpines uh, that had the square, the rectangular side fuel pump. Uh, nothing else extremely special about it, you know, but it is that one year only model that's pretty hard to come by. This one was brand new in the bag, NOS. Uh, just gonna have to get this marker off and uh, see about installing it in the engine of my choice. So the last thing I wanna show you kids is this haul of NOS stuff that uh, my uncle and I picked up. Basically, long story short, uh, he ended up meeting a gentleman that was in his 70s that said that he had a garage back in the late 60s, early 70s, and he serviced snowmobiles, uh, that he still had a whole bunch of NOS stuff, and sure enough, it did not disappoint. He didn't have a whole lot of it, but he did have some good stuff. Look at this, two backrest doors. This one still has the sticker on it, but despite being dirty, these are brand spanking new, probably off a of early 70s Olympic. There was a whole bunch of these. Uh, this is really cool. Um, this is the intake manifold for a 1969, 669 TNT. I have one and I don't have this manifold. So I was a little bit surprised when I saw that in the pile. Obviously a lot of these were taken off back in the early 70s because they sucked. And I ended up finding one for my sled. Very happy with that. These are off in a LAN or in a LAN blizzard. This box says Bosch on it, single cylinder. Oh, and it's some old NOS points Bosch, still new in the box. Speaking of Bosch stuff again, points, uh, we have some spark plugs in there. Uh, I'm sure we had a couple condensers, more spark plugs. Uh, these are NOS floor mats for again, probably a late 60s, early 70s sled. One of these fuel spouts. I'm actually missing this on my 68, so happy I found that. Skidoo parts miscellaneous once again uh these are some nos uh i guess drive sprockets or idler sprockets and again more bosch spark plugs Ooh, a ring i'm not sure what that part's for i'll have to look it up all right, what else is there? Uh, we got bogey springs, uh, HL carbs, and a whole bunch of different gaskets. Uh, that's it. I think we have those little those little hubcaps that go on the bogey wheels. Um, 
and all kinds of other miscellaneous stuff, uh, as you can see right over here. Ooh, a little piston. So that pretty much wraps up uh, all the finds that I've made this year. But wait, Matt, isn't there one more thing? Yes, there is right over here, folks, something very, very special. And I blurred it out for a reason because it's a mystery engine, a mystery engine that I paid a small fortune for. And it'll be up to you to tell me whether or not it was worth it. But you guessed it, folks, that's going to be in another video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Take a second to like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Signing out.